Okay, so in this video, I'm going to unclog the heater core in this 95 Cadillac Fleetwood. A couple days ago, when I was driving around, my heater core plugged up, and this resulted in foggy windows and a very unhappy driver. Cool. So I have determined that the heater core is plugged up. Um, I went for a drive yesterday, had no heat coming out, and I was very unhappy. I had foggy windows, and I couldn't see out of them. Now, to determine which hose is blocked, you just feel it. And if one of them is hotter than the other, which the bottom one is hotter, that means that the, that the top hose is plugged if it feels warm. <clears throat> And if you're able to squeeze the hose, then that also could mean bad things because that could also mean that there's no coolant going through it. So, so in order to take the hoses off, I need to undo these hose clamps, which are right there, slide them back and then pull the hose off. But before I do that, I need to drain out the coolant because at this T connection, this little tube right there connects to the bottom of this coolant reservoir. And what happens is, if I undo that T-clamp, all that's in this tank will start pouring on the ground, and I don't want that. So, I have a turkey baster, and I also have a pail, and I'm just gonna siphon it out, and then life should be good. And, yeah, so. I just gotta siphon it out and then we'll get started. Okay, so here's one thing that I can say about um, car lots and car repair shops. When they tell you that they're gonna flush your cooling system, what they actually mean is they're going to drain your cooling system and fill it back up. I was under the impression that this car would have had the whole system flushed through with Prestone coolant flush and all that stuff to get all the crap out. Well, unfortunately, all they did was just drain the coolant and put new coolant in. And within a month, it's turned to this orange, brownish looking crap. So I guess I'm going to have to change the coolant as well. And this could probably be the cause to why my heater core plugged up again. Because this isn't the first time that this has happened. I've had this happen many times before. And all of this rusty... Or I think this is rusty water or... I have no idea what that is. But it's mixed into the coolant and that's not good. So... Yeah, I'm going to keep doing this until I can't get any more out, and then I'll remove the hose clamps. Now, just so you know, you have to do this when the engine is cold. You cannot do this while it's hot, or else you'll do something very stupid. You remove the coolant cap, and then before you know it, you're going to have coolant spraying all the way up onto the hood, all over your engine. Looks like somebody already did that lifted the hood up yesterday and found that there was coolant all over my engine. So, that's not good. Anyway, I'm going to keep doing this and then uh, move to the next part. Okay, that took way too long. That took probably about 25 minutes to do. I was using a turkey baster and that's all the crap that came out. Almost looks like tomato juice or beef broth. Well now, I can finally get the hose clamp off, and whatever is left in the cooling system, I have a tray underneath so it will catch it all. So that way my cute little kitty doesn't lap it all up. So, I just gotta get that clamp off, and this requires two hands. And this is the clamp I'm talking about. And all you need is, where the hell is my tool? Oh yeah, I left it on the front porch. The tool that you'll need is, I think these are called channel locks or whatever they are. Uh, or, I don't think they're called channel locks, but whatever the hell they're called. 
he will get the job done. And this is our uh, bicycle pump that we're going to be using to try to force all of that crap out of the heater core. Now if that does not work, you can use a garden hose if the day is nice, like today, or an, an actual air compressor. And I think the air compressor would be a better option, but it's all the way over there and I don't really want to get it right now, so I'm just going to try what I have first and then if that doesn't work, go up the list. Okay, so just by removing this one hose alone, I can actually see something in that tube. It's... Yeah, it's kind of hard to see it, but I can see a chunk in there, so... This will definitely explain why my heater core is not functioning as it should be. There's a lot of restriction in this one hose. And George, stay away. Daddy's working. Uh, the next hose I gotta take off is that one, and I'm pretty sure that there's some coolant in that one, and it's gonna probably spray. Luckily, I do have something underneath the car to catch it, if that does happen. I'm also going to be using plastic baggies to try to plug it up as much as I can, and uh, hopefully not get any on the ground. So, let's continue. Okay, so just by looking at this one hose right here, you can clearly see <clears throat> that it is full of co coolant. And I'm just trying to aim it down towards the ground, so that way it en ends up in my little catch tray. When you look at this one, there is absolutely nothing in there. It's just chunks and more chunks. You probably can't see it with the camera, but you can definitely tell that one hose has something in it and the other one does not. So, I'm just going to aim that towards the ground. It's going to catch whatever I dump out, and you can just see how rusty that water is. It's disgusting. Next step, bicycle pump. Okay, so I'd like to say thanks to Mr. Watts, Steve Watts, for taking me to Value Village so I could buy a bicycle pump. This is the best invention ever because I have it stuck on the end of this hose, and as I'm pumping it, I can feel a lot of pressure, so it's definitely plugged and just a little bit of fluid is coming out. So, I just gotta keep pumping away at it, <clears throat> and then if that doesn't fix the problem, I'm bringing out the air compressor. Okay, so you can clearly see, as I'm pumping away at this, it is pushing the coolant out. And you can see how rusty that water is. Very disgusting, isn't it? I just gotta keep doing this until all the coolant's out of that and then put some hot water through it. Do it again and then put it back together and hopefully it will work. Fingers crossed. Look at all that crap. This is what came out of my heater core. You can see all the chunks in there. It's like, I don't know what that is. It's just, look at that. And all that black stuff too. This is what happens when you fill your, your stinking engine up with stop leak. And I didn't do this. This belonged to the owner before me. And, uh... Just to save the embarrassment, I'm not going to mention names. But, yep. Okay, well that took over an hour to do, in total. Um, I've reattached the hoses in the right locations, made sure that my coolant lid is tight, made sure my hose clamps were on properly, filled the car up with coolant, um, I think I might clean off the excess coolant all over the place later from the previous guy who took the cap off. Um, now I need to start the engine 
let it run for a bit, and then I have to burp it. Now burping the engine is very easy. All you have to do is find the bleeder screw. And since somebody used spray paint all over this engine, I'm not going to mention names again, the bleeder screw is supposed to be blue. Well, I found it right there. It's right above the thermostat. So that's the bleeder screw that I need to take off. Or not take off, but to undo and let all the bubbles out. Because by doing all this, there is air trapped inside the hoses, and I have to get all that air out. So that's why they call, call it burping the engine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go for a drive, and um, this is a, a, a cool thing about this car. As you can see, it doesn't have a, a temperature gauge to tell you how hot the engine is. In order to get to that, you have to hold down the hot and the off button on your climate control. You press the up arrow button, and then you press outside temp and it will tell you exactly how hot it is. And already the heat's working very good. <laughs> wow. The heat's working very well, even though I've only been driving for, what, like a minute? Very satisfied. Didn't think that would work, but it did. Now, I've earned myself a coffee. Off to Timmy's. All right, Mom, I know what you're gonna tell me. You used a roasting pan to do this job? Well, we have three of them, so it's one less roasting pan in the world, and I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> so, I had nothing else to put the coolant in, so... This is the result of putting a stop leak in your engine. This is what happens. It creates this chunky almost I, I don't know what this is but it's like a like a crusted coating what it does when you put stop leak in is it mixes with your coolant and any rubber hoses or metal hoses in the engine this stuff will basically fill in those cracks and then adhere to it and that's exactly what stop leak does in this case it didn't really work because it didn't adhere well, adhere well to the rubber or the metals and it was just flaking off. So this is what came out of the heater core. All of this rust and stop leak chunks. And this is also the result of not changing your coolant. If you don't change your coolant, it breaks down and then turns into this acidy substance and then it eats away at your at your engine and cooling system. So what have we learned? Does stop leak work? No.